name is Brian Kaplan. I'm the editor of The Banker. Uh, we're at the spring meeting of the Institute of International Finance in London. I'm here with uh, Nick Shalek, who uh, is with Rivet Capital, which is uh, a company that uh, finances uh, uh, financial startups, and Dan Romero, who's the business development manager for Coinbase, which is one of the platforms for Bitcoin. So, Nick, there was a key, pla uh, key discussion on banking technology this morning, yeah. uh, which you were involved in. And uh, I mean, how much do you think technology is going to be disruptive to the existing banks in the financial sector? I think it'll be hugely important in the next few years, and uh, we'll really see the impact over the next decade. Uh, what we see right now is a, a large disparity between what consumers are used to getting in terms of technology from the Facebooks and Googles and LinkedIns of the world, what they experience in their media consumption or, or other parts of their, uh, their, their technical life, and what they get from the, the traditional financial institutions. So banks should be, uh, should be very focused on this on, and, and on notice. Okay, uh, but I mean, when you, t you ask the banks, like we did this morning, you know, I mean, they say, well, we still have to keep our branch network going, we still got to keep our old customers satisfied. Uh, I mean, what do you think of that argument? Um, I, I think it's true they have an existing customer base they should serve, but they shouldn't miss how that customer base is changing and also the customer base that is coming up and is being served by other types of companies who are paying attention to what the customer actually wants to do on the web, on the mobile, and um, I think it's, it's these companies that will ha uh, are starting to, to be built that will have direct relationships with the customers, companies that we invest in like um, Coinbase, like Credit Karma, like Wealthfront, funding circle that are doing a lot of what banks traditionally did, but doing it in ways that uh, are, are easier for the customer, are smarter about the way they use data in the back end. And I think the banks are going to wake up in, um, in five years, in ten years, and look around and say, where are my customers? Right, okay. Well, Dan, I, I, are they going to you? That's, that's the question. So, so, so first of all, tell us a little bit about, uh, about, about Coinbase and how it's grown and what it does and, and, and where the customers are coming from. Sure. Coinbase is the world's largest consumer and merchant platform for Bitcoin. Right. We make it really easy for currently US-based customers to buy and sell Bitcoin with a bank account. So in actuality, I think we're going to play a role in the financial system, integrating with banks. Um, whether what the role the banks will have 10 years from now, I'm not quite sure. I think they're going to still be around. I think uh, government-backed currency is still going to be around. But Bitcoin is going to have a role to play. And people are still going to want to buy and sell Bitcoin with government-backed currency. So they're going to need banks. OK, I mean, I mean, do you think the regulator is going to come in and start regulating the activities of, of Bitcoin? And what will, difference will that make to your business model? Well, I think they already started to in the US. And each European country has seemed to give different amount of guidance. Uh, the UK has been um, pretty optimistic and open about it. And I think that's still developing here. But uh, I, I think we're trying to work closely with regulators as well as the existing financial system around know your customer, anti-money laundering, compliance. And by doing things uh, that are in a compliant nature, I think Bitcoin can end up being a equal player in the world of finance. And but usually with, with like an entrepreneurial startup, you're hoping to get bought out you know, by a bank, do you think? Or a big player, do you think that will happen? I think, I think our goal is to make Bitcoin easy to accept. And as long as we keep doing that, I think that's what we're going to be focused on. Nick, you're hoping it'll get, you're the investor, so you're hoping it'll get bought out by I a think, bank. I think Coinbase <laughs> can be a very big independent company. Like I said, I do think that some of the large banking and financial institutions will, uh, will wake up in a number of years and say, oh, wow, look at what's been built over here. These are things that we want to own because these are important to our customers. That's really, you know, the, the Coinbase team is, um, is building, along with their banking partners, but independently, a, a, a great compliance and regulatory effort. And I think we're going to see this more entrepreneurs who are serious not just about technology, but about many of the things that banks have traditionally uh, have done well. And you, you know, you ask, um, is Coinbase an example of a company that's going to serve some of the customers who previously were served by banks? I, I'd say absolutely that's what the facts suggest. And this is a company that is um, basically about two years old and now has over uh, uh, 1.3 million customers who are trusting that, trusting them to buy and sell Bitcoin for them and, and hold Be their funds. Because this morning you came up with some very startling figures. So I, th I think it was there's two billion uh, people in the world with current accounts or bank right. accounts, but there's six billion people in the world with mobile phones. So there's four billion people there who are connected but don't have a bank account. So, yeah, so the yeah. question I think that we should ask ourselves and bank, banks should be asking themselves or, or entrepreneurs who, who want to provide financial services, is it likely that those next four billion customers who are going to be connected to the internet, will they be reached through the same models uh, that we've traditionally provided financial services or are they more likely uh, to, to, to be reached through some alternative platform? A, plat a protocol like Bitcoin, for example, opens up a number of 
possibilities in terms of how you serve customers on mobile or, or on the web. Okay, Nick and Dan, thanks for your ideas. We'll let our banker readers decide on how they're going to get those 4 billion customers. Thank you very much.